So in the world before the flood, we had greater atmospheric pressure, greater electromagnetic energy, greater oxygen saturation. These, along with five other components, made life superior. So Noah only needed an outline on what to do. And let's see what it did with the outline. This is our 25-foot, 1 20th scale arc replica that we built upstairs. And we grew it from the bottom up. That means we didn't have to build these huge derricks. Uh, Noah didn't have to use these huge derricks. They were more intelligent, much more intelligent than we are. Uh, you see these, uh, these depictions, these artist renderings, these depictions of uh, building the ark. And you see these huge derricks they had to invent. Well, they were smarter than doing it that way. They knew exactly what to do with everything. You grew it from the bottom up. And I've seen beautiful, sincere artists describe why they had these long 500-foot beams. See, the ark was 510 feet long. So I asked the artist, who's a very good friend of mine, now home with the Lord. I said, uh, where are you going to get a beam that, that long? He said, well, everything was larger in the world before the flood, and it was. But I said, okay, if you get a 510-foot tall tree, how are you going to lift it? and put it in place. Well, you don't have to. If you use the structural interlamination, there is a method that is used today called Paralam. It's a laminating procedure invented in Canada, used in Britain. In Britain, they made bridges out of it. Just take thin sheets of, of wood, smaller pieces of wood, Laminate them together so that you have a whole laminated beam, and it's stronger than a natural beam. The Russians were using it to build uh, cannons out of some years ago. They burned some of it up, so they stopped using that <laughs> because it was wood. Uh, so you don't have to have the huge derricks. You don't have to have the 500-foot beam. You simply laminate it together one small piece at a time. And when you do, you can get 500 feet. You get 1,000 feet if that's what you wanted. So the structural interlamination really works and meets the scriptural mandate. But there's more. In building the ark, Noah was instructed by God to pitch it within and without with pitch. We normally think of pitch as being asphalt like we have on the highway out here. That's post-flood. Aren't you glad God didn't wait till after the flood to tell Noah what to do? So asphalt won't work. Asphalt is a hydrocarbon, so it's a modern pitch. But resin can also be a hydrocarbon. Tree and plant resin is primarily a hydrocarbon. So in building the ark, Noah was instructed by God to pitch it within and without. So we normally think, okay, he took tar. You can read some commentaries by good theologians and they say, okay, he took tar. He waterproofed it outside and he insulated it inside. That's not what God said to do. He's talking about the entire construction. It was to be pitched within and without with pitch. Again, I, I see... Our ICR scholars add meaningful commentary. They, and I quote, a related and similar word used for pitch is kofer. We have gopher for the engineering technique and kofer for pitch. Most often describes the covering payment of a ransom for one's life or that of an entire village. In other words, we have the symbolic act of a high priest making atonement for the sins of the people, insulating and protecting them from judgment. The very materials used in the construction of the ark not only conveyed protection from the judgment of floodwaters, but a deeper layer of meaning in the protection against a sulfurous fiery judgment in the afterlife. All the same word. 
But there's an even deeper spiritual and physical meaning to the pitch atonement application in the construction of the ark. Here's that little piece of wood. You're going to see it in a moment. The Hebrew word kofar means more than just covering or coating the surface or waterproofing and insulation. It denotes actual purging, penetrating, and expiating. Uh, that's what Strong's Hebrew definition will give you. Actually expiating, pushing aside material and filling the gap. Completely saturating. So, you're going to see a piece of wood that isn't just coated on the outsides, but every single crevice and pore is penetrated with a resinous plant pitch. And it's going to be meaningful. It denotes actual purging, penetrating, expiating the interior as well as covering the exterior. The wood used in the building process and the specific pitch hydrocarbon used in the process would not be an asphalt tar like covers the highway, but a natural resin hydrocarbon from mm -hmm. compatible plants or trees. Mm 